Okay, so now we're going to discuss the interpretation of the standard deviation. And if you remember, the definition of the standard deviation was that it was the average deviation from the mean. So if you remember, we had the deviation from the mean being each individual data value, which we were calling xi, minus the value of the mean. All right. And that's what we were calling the deviation from the mean. And each individual data value you can do this for. So there are exactly n deviations from the mean in any data set. All those n deviations from the mean can be averaged. And what we call the standard deviation is that average, or is one of those averages, is one way of averaging those deviations from the mean. So basically, what we're saying is if we have a data set where the values range uh, can be put onto this number line, and we have the middle of that data set being x bar, the average or the mean, then if I take all the individual deviations, the average that they would the average distance that they would be from this point right here would be s. So basically if I take if I start at x bar, and I go to the right, a distance of s units, the standard deviation, then I'm going to get to a value called, that I can label x bar plus s. So this is, on average, how much each value would be higher than the mean. So all the values that are above the mean, this is the average distance that they would be from the mean, okay? So if you're within, x bar and x bar plus s, you're a very average value because um, the average distance from the mean is s. Now, if you go back in the other direction, because remember, these things don't just deviate in one direction. Some of them are larger than the mean. Some of them are smaller than the mean. So you can also go s units in that direction, and it takes it to a value x bar minus s. So on average, the values below the mean are about this far away from the mean on average. So this is how, on average, how far the values are from the mean, that standard deviation. So now let's say we go another s units in this direction. Well, now I'm pretty far out. I'm going another s units here. Now this value here is going to be x bar plus 2s's. So this is x bar plus 2s. And x bar plus 2s is uh, quite far away from the mean is twice the average distance. So this is actually pretty far. This is about twice as far as the average value would be from the mean. So if you're twice as far as the average value would be from the mean, you're pretty far away. And that's in the positive direction. You can also go back this far or go back that same distance in this direction, s units, and you get to x bar minus 2s. And this is twice as far as a value would be from the mean in the negative direction. So that's quite far from the average also. Those values that are getting that far out are um, beginning to be more and more rare. Okay, so let's see here. Let's get rid of this and put some numbers behind all this theory, all right? So what we're going to do now is we're going to interpret some more NBA stats. So uh, let's go ahead and let's uh, look at uh, NBA.com again. And we're going to look at the point totals for January for LeBron James and for Kevin Durant. So remember earlier, or in another video, we were calculating the standard deviation. We took January 2013, and we went over to LeBron's point totals uh, for that month. And we got these 13 values here. And now we're going to do the same thing for Kevin Durant. We're going to go to uh, his point totals for January. And we're going to take these values here. Actually, he played more games in January than LeBron did. He played a total of 16 games, while LeBron only played 13 games. So what we're going to do is we're going to put these two um, sets, basically sets of point totals for these two gentlemen, we're going to put them into Excel, and we're going to find the mean and the standard deviation. So, and what we have here is we have LeBron James's um, 
point totals for January, and we have Kevin Durant's point totals for January. And what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the means and standard deviations. So I'm going to put the means here in row 18. I'm going to put the standard deviations here in row um, 19. So let's see what we have. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to go, we're going to highlight right under the column that has LeBron James's point total. So here I'm going to put the mean for LeBron James's point totals. So we'll go and we'll click on the function button to insert a function. And the kind of function we're going to insert is a statistical function. So it's on the right thing here. But usually this thing is defaulted to all. Um, it's on statistic, statistical because I use it quite a lot. But um, if it's on all, you just click the drop down box and you click on statistical. And then these are all the statistical uh, functions that you can um, use in Excel. And what we want is we want a mean. The mean is actually in Excel as the average. So you don't go for the mean, you actually go for the average. And you click on that, and then Excel is going to ask you what numbers you want to take the average of. So I click here, and I just highlight these numbers for LeBron James, and it's going to give me the average output for LeBron James, the average point totals for the month of January in 2013. So I click here and I click OK, and it gives me LeBron James's mean to be the number 27, this highlighted um, cell right here. So now let's find Kevin Durant's mean. We're going to do the exact same thing. Uh, and we go to FX, we go to average again, we have average, and we're going to tell it that we want to, we're going to tell it we want to average these numbers, the point totals for Kevin Durant, and press OK. So here are the averages for Kevin Durant and LeBron James. And actually, we don't need that many decimal places. When you're going to round a standard deviation, you should round to one more decimal than is present in the data set. And in our data set, we, only ha we, we don't have any decimal places. Uh, these are all whole numbers. So we're going to round to one decimal. So we're going to call this mean 31.6. Now let's calculate their standard deviations. The standard deviation for LeBron James. Well, standard deviation is another function that Excel can do. So if you go to functions again, that little FX key, and you go down, you're going to go down until you see standard deviation, which is abbreviated STDEV, I believe. So we go all the way down. Oh, let's, well, let's just drag this. Here we go, standard deviation. We want the standard deviation dot S. That's the standard deviation of a sample. So we click OK, and it's going to ask us, where do we want to take the standard deviation? So we come and we take LeBron James's point totals, and we use those numbers to, make, to find the standard deviation. And we get the same standard deviation we got when we calculated it by hand. <laughs> well, now you know Excel can do the exact same thing we did by hand. And then we want only two or one place beyond the decimal. We're going to round this to the tenths place. Doing the same thing over here, we're going to, again, go for standard deviation. Past it, standard deviation of a sample. And OK, and then it's going to ask me where I want to do this. I'm going to take the standard deviation for Kevin Durant. All right. OK, so now we'll decrease the indent on this also, or decrease the uh, decimal on this. And here we have it. We have our numbers. For LeBron James, we have uh, a mean of 27 and a standard deviation of 6.6. .6. And for Kevin Durant, we have a mean of 31.6 and a standard deviation of 8.4. Now, what this means is that on average, LeBron James's um, deviations from 27, the, 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 the average that each of his scoring outputs are from 27 is only 6.6. .6. And the average that Kevin Durant's scoring output is from 31.6 is 8.4. What that means is that even though Kevin Durant has a higher um, average, he's a more volatile player. Standard deviation is a measure of volatility. So the 
dispersion of his point outputs is greater. The, the numbers are wider apart, basically. And LeBron James, his numbers are closer together. If you look at that data set, the numbers are closer to the average than uh, in the case of Kevin Durant. And that actually means that LeBron is more consistent. He, he gets consistently closer to 27 than Kevin Durant gets to 31.6. Um, that's one way of using the average to uh, interpret, or the standard deviation to interpret data sets or to look at the differences between data sets. Another way is to look at what we were looking at earlier and to talk about uh, um, the average, or sorry, to talk about how many standard deviations something is away from its mean. So let's go ahead and take a look at these numbers and what they mean as far as putting them on a number line. So let's see, we said for LeBron, we had X bar being 27 and S being 6.6. .6. And we said for uh, Kevin Durant, we had X bar as what? X bar was 31.6 and S was 8.4. So what we're going to do is we're going to see what that means as far as maximums and minimums or put these things on a number line. So for LeBron, his average was 27. 27. If I take 27, and I add to it one standard deviation, one standard deviation away from 27 is, let's see, 27 plus 6.6 .6 would be 33.6. That's 33.6 and 27 minus 6.6 .6 is gonna be 20.4. So on average, LeBron James's point outputs are about this far from the mean. If they're above the mean, so if they're above 27, on average, they're about 33.6. And if they're below the mean, on average, they're about 20. But the average for the entire data set is 27. This is one standard deviation away. Here's X bar. This would be X bar plus S, and this would be X bar minus S. Okay, so let's say we go two standard deviations here. Let's say we subtract 6.6 uh, .6 here. We get 13.8. This is actually X bar minus two standard deviations. I took away 6.6 .6 twice from 27. And this up here, let's see this, that would be 33.6 plus 6.6, .6, which is 40.2, 40.2. So this is two standard deviation above LeBron James's mean. So we have the number that's twice the average above the mean, so that means it would be very unusual, actually, for LeBron James to score 40 or, more, 40 or more points because it's twice the average uh, deviation from 27. And it would also be unusual for LeBron to score 13.8 points or below because it's less than the, or sorry, because it's more than twice the average in the negative direction. So those would be unusual scores. If LeBron ever scores more than 40, or less than 14, we would consider that an unusual night. Now let's do the same thing for Mr. KD, Kevin Durant. All right, so let's extend the page a little here. And for Kevin Durant now, we say his mean, we 
you say the mean for Kevin Durant is 31.6 and the standard deviation is 8.4 so one standard deviation above would be let's see that would be 31.6 plus 8.4 which is 40 so one standard deviation above would be 40 so on average it wouldn't be unusual for Kevin Durant to score 40 points because that's within one average deviation from his mean. So that's actually pretty average. Uh, so that's X bar plus S here. And let me see here. Now if we take 31.6 and we subtract uh, 8.4, we get 23.2. 23.2 so that would also not be unusual of a score for Kevin Durant because that's X bar minus S so that's how far you would expect him to be below his average on average okay now let's see what two standard deviations holds two standard deviations is 48.4 48.4 that's X bar plus two standard deviations so that's twice his average above his mean twice the average distance above his mean that he usually gets he had a night i believe in january where he scored 52 points that was an unusual night because that was more than twice the average distance from his average number of points so that was an unusual night and let's see let's say i mean if i were a betting man i wouldn't bet that he would score that again but uh, it was done and let's see 23.2 and we subtract 8.4 from that and we get 14.8 so this is x bar for Kevin Durant minus 2s on any given night it wouldn't be unusual for Kevin Durant to give you 23.2 points but it also wouldn't be unusual for him to give you 40 points while LeBron James it wouldn't be unusual for him to give you 20.4 points but it also wouldn't be unusual for him to give you 33.6 points so LeBron James is a little bit more consistent his range is smaller for usual values than Kevin Durant but in any case Kevin Durant scores more points so uh, he is more of a prolific scorer. So that's one way that we can, or sorry, that's one of the ways in which we use uh, the standard deviation to interpret data.